Hey there, I'm Davey Ward Erickson, the founder of the Institute of Authentic Tantra Education. And uh, today I want to talk to you about how to meditate properly. Uh, because meditation, uh, there's a variety of different types of meditation and styles of meditation. Uh, but for those of you who uh, enjoy Western science to validate the efficacy of Eastern techniques, um, it has been clinically proven on numerous occasions that meditation of all sorts, mindfulness practices, particularly of all sorts, uh, have a beneficial impact, a beneficial effect upon uh, our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health, and uh, the totality of our experience as human beings. Meditation practices can enhance uh, our experience of, of joy and connection and pleasure and peace and balance in every area of our life. Uh, I personally have been meditating for a quarter of a century. I've been actively meditating for 25 years. Uh, and I started with the Ashaya's Ascension Meditation, which is uh, a meditation practice that is rooted in Eastern mindfulness practices, woven with a, a Western orientation. Um, and for over the past 13 years, I've been actively cultivating uh, Tibetan Tantric Buddhist meditations, the Tibetan Five Element Meditations, and other Vajrayana Buddhist practices. So I've had a lot of uh, mileage <laughs> under my belt when it comes to uh, mindfulness and meditation. So I want to share these tips for how to meditate properly with you uh, because I would have found them so helpful 25 years ago uh, if someone had shared these with me. Uh, one of the biggest issues that I see and that I remember having and that I see my students having in terms of meditation is trying to force the mind, trying thinking that focus means uh, control, uh, means rigidity, and means force in any way. Uh, and so when you are forcing the mind, that is going to be a miserable experience for you. <laughs> So, uh, so I know when I first, first was introduced to meditation, I, and, and people said, you know, clear your mind. And I was like, trying to clear my mind and straining really hard to make the mind clear. And it was torture. It was awful. Like I couldn't meditate for like two minutes because, uh, it was so strenuous. <laughs> it was like the absolute opposite of relaxing. So, and I hear this from, from other people in the world as well. Like, I'd love to meditate, but I don't know how to clear my mind, or it's hard, or I don't like it. And, and meditation actually should feel like drinking a cool glass of water on a really hot day. That's what meditation ultimately and ideally should feel like for us when we're doing it without force, uh, and we're practicing it in the way that it was designed for us to practice. So meditation, when we're doing it properly, is actually working with the mind, not against the mind. It's the understanding that, that thoughts are normal and natural, and thoughts flow through the mind like currents of water. So I'm going to give you an analogy here. Imagine that your mind is a body of water, like a deep body of water, like a lake or an ocean. And most of the time without meditation practice and the conventional kind of Western orientation to life, we're floating on the surface of the mind. And sometimes just like the surface of a body of water, sometimes it's calm and clear and we can kind of cruise along. But a lot of times it's turbulent and there's ripples and there's, there can be big waves or there can be little, you know, little turbulence, little waves or there's a breeze blowing across the lake. But we're kind of like, our awareness is kind of like tossed around like a little ship on the, on the ocean waves. And there's no anchor, there's no mooring, there's no grounding into a deeper truth. And so we can go through our days feeling like, wow, just kind of like blindsided by all the thoughts and all the shit that's flying by us at every moment. Um, or again, as I said, some days, you know, the waters of the mind are clear. And so we can have a more, an experience of more balance and more, more openness. So with meditation, what we're doing is we are allowing the mind to sink more deeply into this ocean, so to speak, the ocean of your own mind. And it's almost like dropping an anchor to the bottom of the sea floor. So that when these waves are coming and the, you know, the turbulence of life is occurring, instead of being tossed around by it, we have a root, we have an anchor. And that anchor, at least in Tibetan tantric meditation, is the anchor is into your own heart, into the heart, uh, the infinite space of your own mind.
that's where your anchor is, which I find is really beautiful, anchoring into our heart and the source of unconditional love. So with meditation, we are training the mind to instead of focus on all these ripples and the currents on the surface, to begin cultivating and sinking into a deeper state of presence, awareness, and focus. And so all of this turbulence may still be going on on the surface, but we are not as impacted by it. We are not as affected by it. We're not tossed along by the waves. So think of like, you know, someone again floating in a, on a raft uh, on the surface of the ocean during a storm and someone who's underneath the water and like kind of looking up and looking up at all the drama and activity going on up there, but we're anchored in a deeper space. We're not being tossed around. We may be like flowing gently with the, the underwater currents instead of bouncing around on the surface so that's 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 the impact that's the effect that meditation can have on our awareness when practicing uh, any meditation technique it's really about changing and shifting your focus so again our normal everyday awareness is focused on all of the thoughts that we're thinking throughout the day and our thoughts are often turbulent. I think there was a science done several years ago that said the average uh, Westerner thinks over 100,000 conflicting thoughts every day. And I think that research was done like 20 years ago. So I would imagine with the, you know, technology and distraction and that sort of thing that uh, that number has increased significantly. So, and again, these hundreds of thousands of thoughts are conflicting thoughts. So they're not thoughts about like, you know, oh, I want to benefit the world by doing this, you know, wonderful thing. And, and, oh, here's my, you know, contribution to uplifting humanity. Those, those thoughts may occur in your mind. They're all often, uh, conflicted with other thoughts, maybe about how we're not good enough to do what we want to do, or this person said that, or I've got to worry about this bill, or, you know, what's going on on in on the news, or just all of this conflict, all of this, this discordance that is that is normalized in Western society. Western society is very discordant. And we just kind of navigate this as as a normal state of being. And I can assure you that it is not normal. It is it is it is not a reflection of, of our true nature as human beings. And so with correct meditation practice, we're giving the mind something concrete, tangible, and rooted in our ultimate nature, in ultimate truth. So that's, that's the key about meditation practices, is that the more potent they are, the more they are reflective of our ultimate nature and ultimate truth. This is one of the reasons why I adhere to the lineage-based methods of Vajrayana Tantric Buddhism, as opposed to, you know, something that somebody, you know, a meditation practice that somebody made up that may be a lovely meditation practice, but it's not a transmission from an enlightened mind. So when doing meditation practice, I highly encourage you to uh, connect with lineages or methods or practices where the root or the founder of that practice is recognized as a enlightened or, or realized being and their transmission, their teachings have been transmitted, you know, directly from the source to you. So that's a really important uh, piece when it comes to meditation practices, again, to ensure the efficacy and to ensure that you're getting effective results, because if you're not getting results from your practice, what's the point of your practice, right? So giving the mind something concrete and, and realized to focus on, something that has been proven uh, over time to affect and cause positive beneficial changes in the mind. So that's your point of focus. And then all we do with meditation is shift our focus from these turbulent thoughts and these currents of thoughts that are arising and put our attention on that point of focus. And the thing is that we do not need to force the mind to stay present with that point of focus. It is natural for the mind to wander. We are retraining our attention. 
Our attention has been focused on our thoughts for most of our life. So it's going to take time to retrain the mind to be present with our point of focus. That's a critical thing. Right? So when I first started meditation, I had this expectation that I was just supposed to stay focused on this thing. And that's such an unrealistic expectation because I've, if I've been doing this other thing my whole life, how and why would I expect to be able to do something different in an instant with no practice and no training? So one of the core functions of meditation is mind training. We're literally, you're literally retraining your mind, rewiring your brain, literally, to be present, to, to, to focus on, on what you choose to focus on, as opposed to being carried away by our habits, by our conditioning, by our propensity. So we are reclaiming control over our mind, ultimately. We're reclaiming control over what we put our attention on, what we choose to focus on, what we choose to put our attention on. And this process can be easy and graceful and natural because what you are doing is, again, it is natural. It is natural to redirect your focus. You're, you're thinking about thoughts and you know doing the dishes and whatever. You remind, you become aware that you're thinking and you gently bring your awareness back to this point of focus. And then you're going to lose focus again. You're going to, you're going to follow your thoughts. Your mind's going to wander. And anytime you notice that you're thinking, simply and gently bring your awareness back to that point of focus. And for a while, it's going to be this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that is perfectly okay. That is exactly what's supposed to happen. Because actually that back and forth, every time you come back to this point of focus, you are anchoring, it's kind of like a touchstone. You're anchoring your awareness in your ultimate truth. And then you're gonna go away. And then you're gonna come back to truth. And then you're gonna follow your habit. And then you're gonna come back to truth. And then you're gonna lose your focus. And then you're gonna come back to truth. But eventually, because what we are anchoring in is the truth, the mind will eventually relax and want to be present here because this feels better than all of this fucking chaos. This presence, this truth, this clarity, this connection to your ultimate awareness is more pleasurable and desirable than all the fucking drama. It absolutely is. And when you can begin to sense this and feel this, there's no struggle. There's no strain. It's simply a matter of choice. Do I want to follow that crazy thought or do I want to ground and anchor in to my ultimate nature, my ultimate awareness and feel the peace, the presence, the clarity, the joy and the bliss that is inherent in my ultimate nature. I know which choice I'm making on a daily basis. So this is the other thing about meditating properly. Remember this analogy of, of a deep body of water and all this turbulence on you know, the surface. Well, because that turbulence is so normalized, we don't even notice it sometimes. Like so much of the thoughts that are running are running in our subconscious. We're not even aware of them because we're functioning, right? But there's all this story going on underneath that is impacting and is uh, determining how we flow and how we move through life. And so when we first start getting present with ourselves, with our body, with our breath, with our mind, it may seem like there's a torrent of thoughts because we're finally resting enough, getting present enough to actually see all the shit that's been going on under the surface, to become aware of all of that static that's running all the time. And so at first it may seem like you actually have more thoughts than you did before when you first start meditating. It may seem like a deluge or a, or a waterfall of thoughts. And this is, this is something that is stated often in some of the, the tantric Buddhist, Buddhist uh, texts or teachings that I've read. But eventually what occurs, if again, if you, instead of freaking out like, oh my God, I've got more thoughts, just like, okay, you've got more thoughts. Just allow the thoughts to come. And anytime you notice that you're following a thought, gently and simply bring your awareness back to this beautiful, brilliant, shining point of focus that you have introduced in your meditation practice. 
Anytime you're aware that you're thinking, gently bring your mind back. And as we do this over and over again, as I said, the mind begins to crave this because it is the natural state. My Lama calls this the natural mind. The mind wants ultimately to be in the state of rest because it is expansive. It's powerful. It's potent. I mean, this is, this is infinity. This is the source of, of everything. And it feels delicious to rest in our ultimate nature. So instead of it being a struggle to get there, the mind relaxes, lets go, and comes to rest enough to actually just absorb and kind of marinate <laughs> in this, the deliciousness of who and what you truly are. And over time, what occurs, remember I gave this analogy of this anchor. So what occurs is this anchor begins to sink more deeply, deeper and deeper into the depths of the ocean. And so what used to be this turbulent functioning then begins to function at a deeper level and a deeper level and a deeper level. So at a certain point, the depth of your ultimate consciousness and your functioning relative mind experience union, become one. And that, in my understanding, is one of the first stages of enlightenment, when our ultimate mind and our relative mind unite. And from there, all kinds of awesome stuff happens, and I'll let you know what happens when I get there. If you're already there, you can let me know what, what's going on in that space. But for now, our, our task or our practice or our yoga, so to speak, is to cultivate presence with our breath, with our body, with our divinity, with our ultimate nature. And practice this, cultivate this every day. And the deeper we go, the better it gets. And so this is a little tutorial. <laughs> on how to meditate correctly uh, based on my 25 years of meditative experience. So I hope, I hope this resonated with you. I hope this was clear for you and you're able to implement this uh, in your meditation practice. And if you wanna learn more about the Tibetan Five Element Tantric Meditation Practices, I invite you to go to our website, AuthenticTantra.com uh, and uh, sign up for any of our free offerings if you haven't already, or contact one of our amazing coaches who can guide you and tailor and, and kind of um, support and nurture your journey into reconnecting with your ultimate divine nature, which ultimately is the totality of your human nature. <laughs>